Are you guys ready? Uh, anyway, um, so we started. Um, we started from Kathmandu, right? Uh, we started in Bagmati. Uh, Bagmati is the first river. You can imagine. I love getting wet, right? You know, I love river. I love getting wet. And of course, when you go to the river, that's why you go to the river, right? To get wet and and to get splashes, to get that adrenaline kicked. This was the first river. You know, for a minute, I was super excited. And after a couple of minutes, I wanted to finish this short river trip without touching the water. It was, it was uh, that filthy. And um, we finished the river trip and then we moved to another river, which is like 70 kilometers uh, away from, from Kathmandu. And um, so during this journey to the river, you know, we we're all excited. And then when we reached the starting point, then, um, then I, that like my brain got like hammered by everything, right? Like now I'm like realizing shit, I'm, I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving my friends, I'm leaving my comfort. I'm gonna, I'm going for like six months, right? And then I'm like, shit, I'm taking these three kids that I have never, um, never, you know, been in expedition with. And these three kids, they, they are, they are good at what they do, but like, I have no idea how they will react in expedition. And I also realized, you know, being Nepalese, culturally, I'm responsible, right? If anything goes wrong, it doesn't matter who, who is stupid there. You know, it's just me because I am the senior, right? Like the blame comes on me. So I realized this and then, then, you know, everything crept in. And also um, we're having trouble because we have so much gear, right? Our kayaks were weighing around 45 above, right? So I start to realize like, okay, these boys have no experience, you know, kayaking a heavy kayak, right? Those who are kayaker here, you probably know what it is to paddle with heavy kayaks, you know? So just to, just to tell you, like if the kayak is heavy and you are in a rapid, it goes fast. If kayak is not heavy, you are on a flat part, it goes slow. So going slow is not a problem, but going fast in a rapid is a huge, huge problem because you cannot hit the lines, right? And, and the lines we are going to hit during this journey is like, we're going as far as possible up to the mountain, running some crazy rapids, coming all the way to the Tarai, right? So, so at the starting point, I was kind of like scratching my head and and then we are also, <clears throat> we already faced uh, trouble, problem, right? So we, we wanted to go to this Milamsi River. And every single Nepalese know the Milamsi River because we have this huge project um, that is just completed, right? You're gonna find out about it uh, quickly. So, so I go there at the starting point and the other part that disturbed me very badly was, um, um, the loss of a friend. Uh, just a week before, um, we lost one uh, Spanish friend. Um, and, and everything came in and it, it really bugged me. But then anyway, we went into the river, finished the trip, we camped. And then again, you know, everything was kind of coming in my head. It was almost like giving me depression, you know, instead of being like excited, happy about it. I'm just like, all this negative part was coming in. And I just needed to search for like kind of happiness, you know? And then in the morning I woke up like five o'clock and uh, whenever it was daylight, half past five, I see these villagers, you know, cutting, uh, harvesting uh, a rice field or rice. And then I, went there and I started talking to them. And then um, they were very friendly. And then I asked them about the river that we just paddled. What do they think about the project? And when they told me all these stories, then I was like, shit, you know, there is a huge problem then all this problem I'm thinking about, you know, my problem is not a problem. You know, we, we are going through a, uh, lot bigger problem than, than this. And I saw it as a problem, right? Because these villagers are going to lose the river, 
right? And they're going to lose the river in a way that it will never come back unless we, we cancel the project, then it will come back. So then, you know, and these guys were also so uh, thankful that we were there. And also they appreciated that we were uh, traveling, you know, they were like a villager from, from that corner was like, wow, this is great. You guys are traveling your country. You know, I would love to see uh, other parts, you know, how it is in the West, in the center, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, you guys are very excited. You know, I was not expecting that. And they made us a fresh, organic, homemade breakfast with like typical uh, Nepali chia on a big steel glass that I used to have when I was 16, 17, right? When I used to travel by the river. It just reminded me, reminded me of, you know, old days. And I was, I was just instantly happy. These people just made me happy. If I didn't have met these people, I don't know. I would have been miserable for a while, I think. And then the idea of making film was not there. Um, I just wanted to finish the trip. And after that, I was going to find somebody to kind of put a little bit of money to edit this documentary. And it was going to come out. That was the idea. Um, but that being said, you know, Nat, uh, Nat Geo team did approach us. They wanted to make the documentary out of our journey. But then after heavy thinking, uh, I, I, I came to a conclusion and said, no, we don't, we don't want anybody to follow us because, because we are there to, to uh, you know, to experience the authenticity of Nepal, right? We wanted to see the, you know, village, the people, the living style, and what the development is doing to them, right? This is what we wanted to see, right? So bringing in a huge Nat Geo camera crew, I think it would have changed everything. So that's why we wanted to film, and, and that was the idea. End of the, you know, after uh, end of the expedition, we were going to make the video. But then that particular river, that particular converse, conversation from that farmer kind of changed my mind. Then I was like, you know, I don't have huge viewers in my YouTube channel, but then at least there are somebody, you know, like someone genuine is watching. And, and many of these people who are in my channel, they are there because they love what, what we are doing, right? Like what we do in adventure and, and what we talk about. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna wait. Let's make it because this is a message we have to start spreading. So that's why we decided to like, okay, so we uh, managed to have one person bring all our laptops and everything. And we would tell them like, okay, meet us in two weeks right here. We're gonna take a break one day or maybe two days max. We're gonna make a short movie and then we'll put it out on internet, depending on, on whatever the story will be. So this is the first one we made after we started. I'm gonna put the link here. Um, if you guys watch this, this is three minutes, 54 seconds. Um, so almost four minutes. So keep in mind when you watch this, watch this video, every single river, there are two rivers you see in these videos, in this video, right? And one river just recently has dried out completely, right? Completely. And the other river, will dry out very soon. So they are working on it. And these rivers has been redirected through many mountains to Kathmandu. So it's not a hydropower. It's, it's basically a war, way, way worse than a hydropower. So uh, you guys should just watch this and uh, we'll catch up in five minutes. get back into it um so so you you saw right like these two rivers like one the project just finished right so one river is gone right you see the fisherman that fisherman i i met uh he told me you know there are around like 50 60 young fishermen who are still in college or school you know they basically pay their bills and school fees with that money, right? So that means it's all gone. 
Uh, at the very end, you also see uh, when the four kayaker kayaks are going, you also see the sand extractions, right? So all along this river, unfortunately, there is this huge, huge sand extraction mafias, right? This is the only area, in a positive note, this is the only area I saw, I saw every single young villagers in their village. Whereas we don't have any young, you know, men in the village anymore because they all go to um, Arabic country to, to serve. So they were fully there. And, uh, and once this, uh, you know, now they are not gonna have the same quality of sand there. They are not gonna have anything there, right? There's nothing, nothing will really come. Um, so anyway, that's uh, looking at that, knowing the fact of like these rivers will disappear and uh, what it will do to, you know, to the ecosystem and, and uh, villages that are making living out of it, uh, I could not hold it back. So that's why I decided like, okay, you know, at least every month we'll make one video, right? And we'll just tell the story whenever, whatever is needed. So then uh, we continued and uh, the destruction level of rivers, it, it was just shocking, right? Every single river, every single river has like two, three, four, five, six, up to 20, up to 20 hydropower um, projects, like either proposed or that are already uh, certified, right? They can do it. So then, uh, then we moved to, uh, we moved few rivers, Bodegosi, Balefi, same story. And then we went to Tambakosi. And in Tambakosi, the shocking part was, um, so there is also one of the biggest um, hydropower plant going on. And what I found out there was uh, actually very interesting, right? This is what tells you how corrupted our country is. So, so I happened to uh, be with my friend and she knew a guy who was the in charge of uh, environmental assessment, right? Of that project. And he failed it. He said, no, right? With, with all the research, he failed it. But then they fired him, they hired the new one and the new one passed it. And that's how this project is going on. And I found out about it. So I wanted to kind of go political into our films, but then I was kind of like, okay, okay you know, forget about it. You know, politi politicians are politicians, they're doing what they're doing. But if we at least um, can relay the message in between us, right? Like maybe one day we'll become the politician, right? Or maybe, maybe you know, as a local, we will not allow them to do it, right? So, so going political was, was not my choice. But anyway, then uh, I was in this Tamakosi River um, as a team. You have seen there are three more boys with me, right? So one is, uh, he's called Tarzan. So he's Tarzan. He, just like his name, he's Tarzan. Right? Um, you know, he can do anything. He, he, there is just naturally, he, he's naturally strong, you know, Mowgli from the jungle. That, that's who he is, right? but he does lack uh, extreme kayaking experience and uh, he speaks very less you know but he keeps more in his heart because i know him know him very well you know for, for a long time and then we have hurry so hurry is the wisest one you know out of them three he's for me he, he was the wisest one right like who uh, who is always positive you just have to tell him like so we really do this, you would always be like, yeah, with, with that big smile on his face, right? You would never object. You would always be like, yes, you know, always happy about it. And uh, he was also good at talking to people. So he was kind of uh, the buffer in the team. And Rosen, you know, Rosen is also wise. He's also, uh, you know, handsome looking, you know, he's also a good kayaker, but, but he was the weakest link in, in our team in terms of uh, kayaking skill. Not because he was bad, not necessarily he was bad. He, he was just, he didn't have that confidence like, like Tarzan had or Hari had. Um, and he also had a little bit of short temper, right? But, but he was, you know, I mean, the reason he was there is because, because all these three were the best one of all, right? That's why they were there. And, and I, 
I loved, I wanted them to be part of this. So, so we all had our own flaws, right? And me, I have, I have my own weaknesses, right? Um, so, so uh, after like two, three, after two weeks, you know, I started to have conflict in the team. Of course, it was, you know, it was not out of the surprise, right? It, it, it came in um, because I did not want it to be their big brother. I wanted to be their friend. But then it was very hard for them to look at me as their friend. You know, they always like, okay, you are my brother. You are big. You decide what you want. You have more experience than us. We'll do everything you decide. But then when I decide, then they would be unhappy with few of my decisions, right? It's like, uh, and I'm like, well, tell me what you, what you don't like. And they would not tell me. They would just don't like it. And I'm like, you give me either the best solution or you just follow. You know, that's it. <laughs> So uh, the conflict was going there. Um, then um, we came down to uh, Tambogosi. Um, we, we, we did also went through some emotional part, right? Like week before we started, um, uh, Marino from Spain, very good friend of ours, he passed away. And I was the one, you know, before I met him one week before we had a beer and I told him, you know, he should go to Tambogosi because Tambogosi is one hell of a river. Right, and he passed away in the river that I, I told him to go. Right, uh, he got into sea and and never came out. And uh, and I was in that exact river. Right, we were we were at that river, and then then we got another sad news. Uh, we lost Adrian from Australia. Right, Adrian is known as like the most friendly guy, one of the best paddler you know, in this planet, blah, 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 all of these. And Adrian was supposed to join us in our uh, eastern part in Arun River, right? Arun is one of the, the strongest rivers. So, so he was supposed to uh, join us there. Um, but then when we were pretty much at the starting point of uh, Tambogosi, we found out that Adrian drowned in uh, Karnali. So the river that that was the last river on our list, right? So, so that kind of like, uh, I don't know, I, at least for me, you know, we were all, all sad. And for me, you know, I, I knew them personally. Uh, so for me, it was kind of like, you know, I really had to question, right? Like we're going through conflict. You know, I was going through all of this in my head and I'm the responsible one just because of our culture. And then, you know, hearing about like you know hearing this news like the best of the best are losing their life in 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 you know in nepal and uh, we just started our trip right we have we have long way to go you know we have all these rivers that they passed away and we we yet have to paddle those rivers so it was uh, it was hard but then uh, you know we had no other choice we we just continued um continued and the, the conflict kind of kept coming, you know, because uh, because one of other idea we had was also like, you know, I'm doing what I could do, right, in terms of filming. But my goal was also to teach them how to film. So that was the idea. Like, we all learn and we all film, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, their interest wasn't really there. And uh, and also, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm older than them because my goal was a little bit, I mean, I thought our... Our goal was the same, but at some point I felt like, you know, I was more into that than they were, right? My goal was like, okay, let's just stop in the village. You know, we are here to, to talk to the villages, to, to see, you know, how they are living, what the development has done, what they think about the, the uh, hydropowers, because everywhere it's happening, right? What do they think about all this sand, and uh, gravel extraction, how it's affecting. So I was kind of missing my team, you know, when, when I was involved in this, right? Like we would stop, I would go to the village, I would talk, but I would miss my team. So, so I was kind of like, you know, trying to bring them back into this. And, um, and we were in um, Dutkosi, Dutkosi River, um, where, uh, where we met a few uh, villagers that kind of helped us to put together the team by, by them talking about like um, the effect of, of global warming or the climate change, right? 
and and this old man could could say like you know so like 10 years ago we used to have you know three different harvests in one season whereas now for the last few years they only have one harvest right because the fruits are not growing the same way blah 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 all of this so so this kind of brought their attention so team was kind of getting along and then um, then uh, we came down then vera came with nikki you know to to visit us and uh, they had our sponsored kayak you know so so they could not you know go without visiting us <laughs> so so they came there and um, and we were all excited and we we have you know we just went through uh, um so our friend's death and all kind of and then uh, i think it was exact same day right vera when you when you arrived yeah so exact same day we um we got another sad news right uh, another friend of our uh, passed away again and again same thing the river right the river took another friend and and she passed away in the river that it's it's like it's our our home river you know we paddle that it's it's close to pokhara we paddle that every single day you know it's easy technique well easy sort of technical grade 4 and she passed away and uh, the saddest part was like she was she was very close to every single of us you know like whereas the other friend that passed away it was more related to me right uh, but she was she was really close to us, like super close, and and she was also helping our club and and such. And it really uh, it kind of you know brought completely different vibe in the team, right? Uh, and and I think we I, I we we were not even talking to each other much about it. You know, we we could see every single one of us <clears throat> we were feeling it, right? Because it meant something to us. It. It is something to us because she was very close friend to everybody. Um, I know we, we did talk about it, you know, after, after a long time, like, but at that particular time for me in my head was like, is it, is it really worth it? You know what we are doing, right? Because we are, we are making living out of this, right? Out of kayaking and, and rafting. And what we are doing is extreme in one way. And, you know, we, we are not, you know, we are only spending our money. We are not making money out of it. We are not doing anything. Okay, it was for our experience, this and that. But then, you know, the big question more was like, is it really worth it, you know, like for all of us? And then at the same time, we were also going through this uh, conflict, right? But then uh, the great thing was like, these two girls were there. And I think, I think that was really, really a plus point for us, right? Because... Uh, though we did not personally talk about it to each other about it right but i think having these two girls uh, it really helped you guys you girls stayed what four or five days right with us we spent four or five days yeah, five days. And it, yeah and it uh, at least like like i said we didn't talk about it but i could sense right like it helped us right it helped us to go through it right uh, we lost a female friend so having female friends you know as close as her you know, especially Vera, you know, we, we all knew Vera very well. So it was very nice for us to, to go through this moment. And, um, and then though we had this conflict, you know, in between team, uh, which I don't want to talk about it too much because it was, it was only for me, right? I just felt like they were not understanding. For them, it was not. For them, they were having, you know, best time of their life. But for me, I'm just like, you know, come on, man. This is like once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? Uh, even though we, we, we want to do it again, maybe this reverse will not be here, right? So, uh, so for, for them, it was fine. It was just me, right? So, so we were going through this and having girls, it, it helped. It helped to, to overcome all of this. Uh, and then after four or five days, girls were leaving. Then, uh, you know, we, we come to like good headed, you know, we were fresh and positive about it and we got our brand new kayaks you know uh, excited to have like imagine like you know boys we could all feel like oh we are sponsored you know we have a sponsored kayak so it was nice um, then we were you know moving towards east right more more towards east and um, so our our first river or or the most challenging river 
the first most telling river was this um, Tamur, Upper Upper Tamur, and it is it is super challenging river, right? It's uh, it's solid class four plus five, like nonstop. So uh, we took almost three days to reach the starting point, right? And and uh, at the starting point, we were like, uh, we, we arrived quite late. Uh, and then I was like, you know, boys, I think uh, we should, we should uh, walk up, you know? This is, this is the regular starting point. Yes, somebody has come here and he started from here already. It's in the guidebook, you know, but our goal is also to explore. So let's go further up. Let's see uh, what, it, what it's there. And then, you know, we're kind of tired. Imagine we were traveling for like two and a half days, right? Like one of the most extreme road we have traveled, right? In a Jeep, not comfortably sitting, right? So, so I, I was sitting comfortably kind of, you know, <laughs> but, you know, we, we're all kind of swapping, but I was the most comfortable one, I guess, you know, because, you know, I'm the big brother, I should be comfortable. They were always telling me you are older one, you know, maybe you need more rest, blah, 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 which I was probably stronger than them. Right? At least I felt that. Then, you know, I was kind of like, let's go there. Then we kind of had the conflict there, right? Not conflict. We were kind of like, you know, in a very awkward situation. Nobody said no, but I could see in their face they didn't want it to go. You know, and I had to kind of uh, remind them, you know, I told them like, boys, you are forgetting what we are here for. You know, if we just start from here, it's something everybody has done. I'm not saying we necessarily have to kayak from there, but let's walk there. Let's see what is there. So I did push the team. And uh, at the end, we all decided that we go, right? So, uh, so we walked for not that long, an hour. And then it was kind of, um, kind of darkest when we arrive to this location. So it's, uh, uh, when you go to Kanchanjanga, uh, those who doesn't know, uh, Kanchanjanga is the third highest mountain in the world. It's, uh, it's quite remote. Uh, so it's it's not heavily uh, touristic, but of course tourist was there. So it's it's the way to go to Kanchanjunga mountain. So uh, so we walked for one hour. So there is no transportation, nothing, right? So we walked, and then I arrived there a little bit in the dark, and um, and it was a it was a perfect place, right? Off season, it was in beginning of December, so nobody's there, only us and a few of our driver friends, they also came there with us. And, uh, and the owner of that uh, hotel was super friendly, nice guy who is uh, drinking his tumba, uh, the rice millet from, from uh, since he wakes up, right? So he's, he's always 24 seven, he's drunk, well, tipsy. You know, that's his life, that has been his life. So we have very good conversation and the, the night he starts, uh, you know, growing and, um, we help in the kitchen to cook. So we're cooking and we're all having nice chat, right? And it was kind of like divided into three compartments, right? So you have the kitchen on this side. And then when you come out of the kitchen, you have like the normal um, sitting area where the old man is talking to us, another man from the hotel is talking to us. And then on the other side is the lounge, right? Where, you, where uh, tourists can sit and so on. So it's all connected. So we were spread into three different places, uh, depending on where we want to go. And uh, we're having great time. We're talking, blah, 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 and we also started having rice millet, right? So uh, it, it's like a beer, but it's lot. It's super healthy. It, it's nowhere close to uh, what beer does to you, right? It's a healthy drink, uh, fermented kind of drink. And another rule we had in our trip in this expedition was like, we do not drink to get drunk. That was simple, right? So we drink just to celebrate, but we cannot get drunk. That was simple rule. So, so we just had our drink. <clears throat> and, uh, and I was sitting with Hari. I was in this third lounge room. I was just sitting with him and we did cheers and we were just sipping that drink. We sipped maybe a couple of sips and Hari told me like, oh, I'm going to pee. So he left. And then we're all talking, chatting, and then suddenly, you know, it's a Dalva time. It's like, oh, Dalva is ready, right? It was like, oh yeah, Dalva is ready. And then we're like, 
where is where is Hari? You know, then I was like, oh, Hari went to pee. You know, I don't remember when did he left, right? I just remember he went to pee. And I kind of sense, like, actually it has been abnormally long, right? Like, you know, I could not remember, but I'm like, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe one hour, you know, because, because I didn't know where he went, right? Like he would be coming and going anywhere. So then we we're like, ah, oh, anyway, he will come. He will come. Let's let's prepare the dalbat. So we started to prepare the dalbat. Half of the team, they were drinking. This driver team were drinking. So they were like, oh, we don't want to eat now. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, let's let's get the dalbat. I'm hungry. So our team wanted to eat. So I was like, oh, put for hurry also. He's also hungry. He will eat. And then that took like around 15, 20 minutes for dalbat to come. But hurry didn't come. Right? Dalbat came. Hurry didn't come. Then we were like, okay, you know, that's, uh, that's all right. You know, uh, I started eating my dalbat. And, you know, when I eat my dalbat meal, I, I never leave even a tiny bit, right? Like that's, that's how we are taught, right? Like leaving food on your plate is disrespectful, disrespectful for your food, right? But that day, halfway down, I just could not eat. I was super hungry, but I certainly was not hungry, right? Because hurry started to come in my mind. I'm like, where is hurry? Where, where did you go? And um, I took my plate. I went to the kitchen and I asked for forgiveness you know, to, the, to the lady. I told her like, I'm really, really sorry. Right? I cannot eat this dalbat. I need to go find my friend. So I left in the kitchen. I came out. I asked for the light. I got the light. I'm like, okay, I need to find hurry. Right? But before me, we, Rosen did went to look for him, right? And somebody also went to look for him. But we just thought like, you know, Hari was tired. Maybe he's taking a nap, this and that. You know, we, we never took, we never thought about anything that can happen to him. So I could not stop. So one of the driver crew, he was like, oh, I will come with you. So I went out, I looked in the room, this, that. I went to another village, which was like five minutes or a couple of minutes. Oh, we went there, asked if they have seen Hari. Nobody has seen Hari, right? And now we know he has been gone for like at least one hour. We know that, right? We, we found that out. And then I, I looked everywhere, everywhere for like, I don't know, almost 20 minutes and I find no Hari. Hari had just been missing, gone. And then, then as I look, I'm, now I'm looking at like, you know, towards the mountain, right? Like this is this way you go to the mountain on my back. This is where we stay downstream. This is where it came from. And the river is right in front of me. And there is, there is a cliff. Well, there, there's kind of like a bush, right? There is a big bush, the kind of a jungle. And the river is down there. You hear the river. And I look at upstream and approximately like 30, 20 to 30 meters, I would say 25 meters, I see a light. Right, and I could right away recognize that this light is, you know, from Hari because because he was with the, the halogen light, right? Like our uh, camping light. So the villages doesn't have those lights. So I'm like, let's hurry, and I start to scream, hurry! And the whole time I'm screaming, hurry, hurry, hurry! You know, no response at all. And I scream, hurry, and then uh, you know, there is there is no response. And I see her, so you can imagine if you're standing, so imagine, imagine, uh, you know, you are standing and imagine I'm sitting on the ground, right? So I see, so imagine I'm sitting and I have my light on my head. So that's the picture I see. So I feel like Hari is sitting. And, you know, I'm like, I, I instantly got a little bit nervous. I'm like, what is happening here? You know, and I'm like, I, I start to walk towards him, like, hurry. No response. And as I come, the light also starts to come slowly up, right? And then it stops, like approximately 10 meters, it stops. And now it's almost my level. And well, during that time, I started thinking like, okay, you know, in Nepal, we have lots of uh, spiritual thing, right? Like the ghost, the uh, witch, this, that, you know, I don't believe in such things, but, but at the same time, I'm like, shit like is he attacked by spiritual i don't know like ghost or witch or something he doesn't speak to me 
And then as I come, like he doesn't move, I could only see the light on his forehead. And as I approach like two meters or something, then I could see the moment. You know, the light starts to go like this. And I'm like, hurry. You know, and I go very close to him and then, then I hold him. You know, I just hold him right here. Like, hurry, you're okay. And then all I could hear is that. <gasps> and then, you know, then I could see like the pool of blood and the blood is already dry. So you can imagine like all his blood is already dry. He's wearing 200 feel down jacket. It looks like a, a chicken that, you know, that got, you know, 10 people just pulled all his plug, all his uh, feathers. He looked like that, right? Like everywhere. And uh, right away, I know something very serious happened to him and he cannot speak. Right? And I'm, I'm trying to ask him, like, what happened, Hari? What happened? He's like, <gasps> that all he does. And then we, we brought him to the hotel, which is like two minute walk. Usually it's like one minute walk. Maybe it took us like five minutes to bring him there. And uh, he just cannot talk. You know, I asked him what happened. You know, he, he could not say what happened, but, you know, I guessed that he fell, right? And I asked him, like, did you feel fall? It's like, yeah, I fell, I fell. And I'm like, are you okay? He's like, no. What happened to you? Does it hurt? Yes. Where? Everywhere. How bad? He just cannot breathe. That bad, right? He just cannot breathe. And that, that was his major complaint. He just cannot breathe. And then we started to do the treatment. And for me, right away, I know I need to call a chopper. You know, I know just, I didn't know, I have not checked anything, but I know something is very serious. Like, like I need to call a chopper. So I called a chopper right away, but the chopper will only come in the morning, right? Around eight o'clock. Then I asked Rosen to, to go and check where he fell from, right? Because we found out where he fell from. So he checked, he comes back within a few minutes and he just whispers in my ear. And he's like, I tried to look at the, the fall with my light, I cannot see the bottom, right? It's just a free fall. So Hari fell approximately 30, 30 plus meters, right? And uh, he doesn't have any memory. He doesn't know anything. So anyway, Hari is there. I did my best to treat him. And uh, I asked him a question at the beginning. You know, when, when I did all the um, assessment, spinal check and all, you know, his spine is fine. Uh, he's complaining about not being able to breathe. So my biggest fear was like, he maybe did some internal uh, damage to his intestine or, or abdominal system. Uh, maybe he broke some ribs that I was sure of. Uh, but my biggest fear was like, if he has destroyed some of his, you know, abdominal system, right? Um, so I asked him, you know, hurry, tell me your pain from one to 10. He told me five. I think any of us would have said like one, you know, being, being the worst. I think I would have said one. He's like five. And he still tells me he cannot breathe, right? He's like, and he, he just cannot breathe, but he says five. And I'm like, after, after half an hour, you know, hurry, what is your pain? Five. <laughs> after one hour, hurry, what is your pain? Five. And around two o'clock, you know, we start to fall asleep. And I'm like, okay, you know, let's take a turn. We sleep. And uh, I came, I actually had a nightmare, you know, around four o'clock. I woke up like dreaming about a hurry. You know, he's dead. And I'm like, shit, I woke up and I rushed down. And then I can see all three completely dead. You know, hurry is sleeping, right? The other two are sleeping also. We are, we are all like waiting. They're all waiting for him. But Hari is still, he's still, he's, he's asleep, part of, right? But he's still kind of like breathing, like he's dying, you know. I would not have been surprised if he would have died any point of that night, but he didn't. Um, so, so next day the chopper came in and um, and took Hari away. Then uh, 
our life changed. So imagine, imagine we're going through all these emotional uh, parts and then uh, we're having conflict. And that particular night, we're supposed to have team meeting and I was supposed to tell them my feelings from my heart, you know, what I think about this uh, whole event, whole expedition and how we can improve as a team. We were going to have the ultimate meeting, right? Of like how we can make everything better. So we never got to talk about it. And Hari was supposed to be my buffer. So that destroyed everything. And, and uh, then we, uh, then I made another short clip after Hari, Hari's accident. And before Hari's accident, I also made another one. Um, because, you know, when we lost three friends in a row within a month, um, I did not want to talk about river conservation, you know, the destruction, this shit, that shit, you know, nothing really matter to me, right? Um, so, so let's watch um, this um, Lost Souls. I will, there you go. This is the first link. And uh, right after that, we will watch, so we'll watch these two clips in a row. And then we'll get back to the story again. Where are we? Okay, we're good at time. So if you can just open up both. Yeah, so just for everyone that, because it went wrong with a few people, I think before, for everyone that doesn't realize we're watching some movies on YouTube directly to just make sure we have the best quality. So the links are now in the chat and you can watch them and then we come back here. Yeah. So, yeah, let's start with um, the Lost Souls, number three. And then right after we'll watch the number four. So we have what? Let's say three, four, five, six. Yeah, six and a half minutes. Then we are, we are back here. So Luigi nodding, Dario as well, and the rest is without videos. So we'll just... Okay. Okay, sweet. So um, so you kind of saw what happened, right? Um, so after, after that, you know, my goal was to, uh, you know, bring Hari back to life. So we, uh, brought him to Kathmandu. So imagine from being, we were kind of like getting into the, uh, remoteness of Nepal, right? Like we were getting what we were looking for, like the authenticity, and we we're going deeper and deeper. You know, we we were dirty, we started to smell, but we could not smell ourselves. We were that comfortable, you know, we were, we were that deep in uh, to the expedition. Then uh, suddenly we were thrown, you know, from that extreme to like back to the city. And uh, we all had a big question mark, whether whether we continue, or we just abandon our mission. And uh, we, uh, we found out that Hari is fine. He, um, he might not you know, be able to join. Maybe he will be able to join, but might not be able to join for, you know, no kayaking for a year or so even. So it was not clear, um, but then, you know, he survived. He survived, he uh, broke few ribs or cracked few ribs uh, flog his uh, lungs with lots of water, <laughs> you know, this and that, all, all these minor injuries. So um, after that, we decided to um, just go back to our uh, roots, right? Like the river that we are always comfortable with, the river where all these boys comes from. So we decided to just go to that river, meet all the friends, families, and and, you know, get comfortable again. Right, so uh, we got into that, and then uh, we got slowly comfortable, and then we, you know, things change, right? Like from from four, now we are three. So uh, in sa safety wise, we have one less person. In terms of load, we have more load, you know. And uh, in terms of in terms of communication, you know, I'm more alone now, right? So so my goal was also to like how 
how I can do my best to, to bring the team together, you know, because now the buffer is gone, right? So, um, so it was very tricky. But then uh, the more trickier thing in the central Nepal, because then we, we, uh, we stopped the west, right? We did not complete that river. Uh, we were supposed to go another river after that. We, we left those two rivers. We decided to just continue in the central because we lost lots of our time just being in the central whilst we were paddling. Um, then the central was completely destructive because center is uh, the most uh, destroyed part of Nepal, right? So, uh, for example, we go to Tirsuli, upper upper Tirsuli, where where I spent my childhood. Right? We were denied the entry, right? Uh, because it's a national park. They, I actually, you know, asked to talk to the head of the uh, the uh, center, the national park. I got to talk to her. And she said, nope, absolutely not. How can I go? They're like, you have to go to Kathmandu, make a paper, and it's gonna take you like one week to 10 days, blah, blah, blah. You have to pay this and that. And I'm like, what if I just wanna go? You know, you just let me go. She's like, no. And then I questioned like, you know, how come there are 10 hydropower projects going on and I cannot paddle the river? And she's like, well, this is for the, the development of the country. You know, and I'm like, I argued a little bit, you know, I'm like, well, I'm also here for the development, you know, I'm doing it in <coughs> development in different ways, you know, I'm here to explore the river, explore this area and promote. And they're like, no, sorry. And then she told me like, if you come back in 10 years, you will not see any rivers. So imagine in this river, there will be 20 hydropower projects. So every single river will maybe come out for like, I don't know, 100 meters and then it will disappear again. 100 meters, maybe it will disappear again. So she told me within 10 years, it will disappear. If not, I'm sure in 20 years, we will not see these rivers. And, uh, and let's, let's not go deep into it, but um, people are starting to face, face the ne negative impact of, of these hydropowers, right? All these villages that, that were for it, uh, they are they are start to face this those who were just after money they're happy they got their money you know they don't care about their ancestor they don't care about uh, the nature they got their money they're happy but those who uh, wanted their place those who wanted their peace uh, start to realize that that this is actually destroying so our central nepal experience was simply just this every single river we went to we were we were more scared of of all these um, flooded, you know, irons, concrete from dams, this and that, than than actually the rapid. Right? Um, same thing. Uh, just to name another one, Buri Gandaki. Buri Gandaki is also really, really nice river. Um, that river was actually painful to to watch, you know. And when we were paddling, we had to run away because they were bombing. They were throwing rocks from the top, not to us, but they were working, right? Like that was our biggest fear. Right? We, were, we were experiencing everything. And then, um, then we, were, we moved to Marsangdi. We experienced the exact same thing in Marsangdi. And then we were supposed to move on a little bit more. But then, then we were like, you know what? Like every single river are like this, you know? And we have already paddled those rivers. So we don't really have to paddle more. So let's forget about central Nepal. This is just, sad story in the central Nepal. So we made a drastic decision to go to West because we know the West is the best, right? Like, and the nature is still preserved, right? And, uh, and also the goal, you know, was more to show the West to this world and, and you know, discover all this undiscovered place and show the world that that, you know, this is still pristine. You know, I know you guys, you hungry mafias will come here and you will, you know, you will do all your, you know, like mafia plans. But then uh, if we show it on time to the right people, maybe, maybe the planning will be better, right? Like instead of like digging wherever they want. So we make a drastic decision and we left. We left to the West and uh, 
oh, you know, worst, worst the best. Uh, and also, uh, it has it has vast culture, and the people. I mean, I I myself, you know, have not been far far west. You know, the very first time I reached there, the people were speaking completely different language, right? They were still speaking Nepalese, but like like I could understand maybe ten percent, you know, because they were speaking so fast. So I was very fascinated. And when when women were speaking, you would understand zero. Because women doesn't travel in Nepal, right? They they are just housewives. They stay home. You know, all they have seen is their village, their kids, and whenever the husband comes back after a few years from making money from India or or a big country, that's all they have seen. So that's why they they don't know any other language than their native language. So communicating with women was was a nightmare, but it was just fascinating. Like because we are moving quite fast places to places and the language were changing, the culture was changing. Uh, and also in the West, uh, we also expe well, I also wanted to kind of dig in into like um, the discrimination between uh, low caste and high caste and, um, and this conflict. And also, uh, um, how do you call it? Uh, the maturation problem, uh, the uh, problem we have in our West, like how they treat when uh, women are in their periods, right? Like they, they put you in like um, a box. It, it's literally a box, right? It's, it's a block made out of uh, stone and, and mud. They put you inside. They put you inside for four days, right? And, and there has been so many stories of like the girls dying in there, right? So, so just going through this and having, you know, open chat with, with villagers, mostly, well, mostly 100% men, right? Like, there's no way we can approach women about it. So, so it was lots of learning curve, curve there. And, uh, and we also had a little bit of, you know, team disagreement and conflict. And uh, I came to actually a point where I said, like, you know what, boys? Uh, I don't want to have bad relation with you guys. So maybe... Uh, you know, you guys can do your own mission is to west. I'm going to go in my own mission is to west. And uh, we'll meet at the end. And we'll end it nicely. You know. So, so we, we did reach that point again. And, uh, and Rosen was sick. So he had to leave. So Tarzan and I were only together. And sometimes Tarzan was sick. So only Rosen and I were together. So we went through all of these. And... Uh, and all this conflict, I wouldn't really say conflict. It was just like misunderstanding, you know, disagreement that was going on. And some party doesn't speak, some speak. So it was just that kind of um, moments that we were going through. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I even took the boys to, uh, I pushed their limits so far. They, uh, they were definitely not happy with me, Rosen, Rosen and Tarzan. We went to Dolpa. You know, Dolpa is, is known as the gem of, of the west right and uh, there is there is this lake uh, spectacular lake uh, oksundo lake and my dream was to go and see that and then we reached uh, the starting point of dolpa uh, tuliveri one of the iconic river of nepal you know every single river paddlers if you ever come to nepal this river should be on your list before it gets destroyed right uh, by far my best river <clears throat> so so we go to this river and of course the idea is the same, right? Like, okay, this is the starting point, but let's go higher up, you know? <laughs> Just like I, I said, you know, when Hari had an accident, let's go higher up. And then there, there was also this lake we wanted to see. But then the villagers were like, no, it's dangerous. You know, nobody has gone up, nobody has come down. And it takes you three days to walk up. And there is so much snow, you cannot do it. And, and the boys were just, just easily, they're like, Yep, we cannot. And I'm like, we haven't even tried. You know, those who haven't come down, those who haven't gone up, they are normal people. You know, we are we are a little bit crazy than the normal people, right? We are adventure. You know, what is the point of just doing it from here if if we don't explore a little bit more? So I uh, convinced them. We left, and it took us two days to reach the the final point from where we could see 
well, from there we had to walk one more hour from anyway that last village, and from there we could go and see the lake, and we could also see the rivers. Uh, we were literally like up to here in snow, right? We were walking like eight hours under the snow. If we didn't have Tarzan, Tarzan is the tallest one, right? If we didn't have Tarzan, I think Rosen and I we would we would drown in that snow. So Tarzan was our force on the front. So we reached the village and then, you know, we're happy. We reached, I know boys were not happy about my decision, but you know, we came there anyway. And then in the morning we have, you know, all night is snowed. And now we have like another meter or one and a half meter of snow. And probably the worst, worst, worst hospitality we have experienced. The worst place we could eat on, but but we have no other choice. So imagine when when it was eating time, she would uh, she would put a dalvat in a plate, and everybody would be watching her like, okay, where is she holding? You know, where is she touching? Because wherever she would touch, we would we would make sure we would not have to do any business on that part of the plate. You know, it was that disgusting. So imagine now we are stuck. You know, now we, we cannot move down and, and boys are not happy. We are not talking to each other anymore, you know. <laughs> and uh, on day number three, you know, it opened up a little bit. I wanted to go see the lake and I told the boys, let's go see the lake. And they were like, they didn't even talk to me. And I, I went alone in this mission. You know, I, uh, I don't like solo traveling because I like to share my experience with, with friends, but I had to see it. I went, you know, I went through uh, some, I don't know, life or death situation because of the flood and all, but, but made it there, came back. And uh, what usually takes us like five hours, it took us like almost 10 hours because of the snow. <laughs> anyway, we came back. So, so team was having this kind of, you know, disagreement. Uh, but then anyway, at the end, we got, a, we got a news, right? Really good news. And that news was like, Hari is coming back, right? And we were, we were all surprised. Like what, you know, last time we talked to him, like a week ago, he said, there's no way he can, he can come. You know, he, the mission is done for him. But then, uh, then he said, you know, he's coming back. So Hari came back uh, in the mission. And uh, so you can imagine, you know, now we have experienced a lot. We have learn to ignore each other, you know, they have learned to ignore Anup, you know, not listen to him. And, you know, I have learned to kind of like be happy with, you know, their unhappy face, you know, and now suddenly we have our favorite person in the trip, right? Everybody's favorite person. So Hari is back. And uh, after Hari is back, then I made this, uh, the last, last piece, uh, which we'll watch. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit then uh, will be the end. So here's the link. Let's, it's 12, 14. So uh, let's start in uh, five, 10 seconds. And then we'll come back. This one is the longest one. This one is like what, seven minutes. You saw at the end, you know, we, we did have a, have a happy ending, you know, four of us, we spent last, because we missed Hari, uh, I think he had an accident on December 6th, if I remember right, and then he came back in the mission uh, beginning of March, so he was with us for the last month, and, uh, and he wanted to see how he would do, so we started from Great Three River, but then, you know, he was, he was throwing a backflip with the kids, and and doing everything. So, so we did some uh, big rivers also. So we, at the end, had a great time. And also uh, what we experienced in the West, you know, like, like everybody was, uh, everybody we met in the West, the, the locals, they would all say like, you know, oh, you are, you're coming from privileged background. You know, you're from Kathmandu, you're from Pokhara you are money, you know, we are poor, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that, we have no facilities, we have no government support, like everybody, everybody was saying that. But then 
for for us and and at this point it was not only for me but at this point for the whole team and uh, that was also success for me right like for the whole team we had the same feeling right like these three boys were also feeling what i was feeling right like uh, the importance of of nature the importance of keeping it pristine the importance of developing proper way so we started to feel the same right though these villagers were saying that they are poor and all you know our conclusion to that was like you are not poor you know you the only thing you have to buy is salt right they produce every other thing every other essential thing and it's organic right they many of these people they don't even know what is fertilizer right they have never used it and they they have good climate depending on where right good climate they they produce good things the only thing that i saw that that could improve right i would say two things right one is education one is health right so so if if something is wrong yes for some you know the first health post is far and even that first health post is maybe not suitable for for their need right so that is definitely need to be improved and the other thing is education because because they do live um kind of you know like wild nomadic life right they they can definitely learn about i mean i mean imagine you know the the chicken is sleeping next to you the goat is sleeping next to you the cow is just right there you know there is a kitchen just next to our cow said so all of this so of course you know they get sick so that uh, but i guess they also have very good immune system you know i i, I could not handle that you know for me i was like oh no if i eat that i'm going to get sick so that so so uh, this was our goal right like this was our message to them like you are not poor you know like like today what i am looking for personally is is what you guys have you know i'm running away from city i barely stay in kathmandu i barely stay in city you know i find more peace a healthier life and i don't know the meaning of living life more with you guys rather than what is out there and now it's not only me you know many of people around me right are also looking for same same type of life so so this was you know kind of relief for me that the whole team you know start to feel the same right so our or- original idea was to to call it you know this is or, or like to close the expedition in karnali the, the last flowing free flowing river but then uh, we started bonding again right we started to understand each other and uh, became better friends we understood our feelings so we all decided to uh, paddle one more river right we all decided to come back to pokhara and uh, paddle that river with many other friends we invited many other friends and um, and paddle the river that uh, took away our friend cash so we came there we paddled nice you know all together and uh, that was that was our happy ending and um the masses that you know or, or the masses we we understood that we want to relay is is you know we we are we are all guilty right like you are all in front of computer you know you all have the smartphone so so we are all guilty right in in this development right we cannot blame the development but but what we want these people to understand is you know i experience the authentic nepal inside this kathmandu right but today it's hard to find in central nepal forget about kathmandu in central nepal the east is being heavily influenced now by the development and the development is rapidly like drilling the east nepal but the west is still raw right but of course the mafias are getting there right the river mafia what i call they're getting there and 
And what, what we are telling everybody is like, we are not against the development. It's fine. We all need the development. We all want the development. Everybody are craving for the development. If I, if I tell the villagers from West, like, oh, you guys are good. You know, this is best. You know, this is what I love. I think they will kill me. You know, I don't think I'll be welcome next time. Uh, so so uh, all we are telling now is like, you know, we have unmanaged, unorganized chaos development in the central Nepal. We start to see exact same thing in the East. And now, like, at least let's think about the West. We will bring the development, but let's, let's plan it well. You know, we will need the dam, right? But let's plan it well. You know, let's not harm the environment in, name, in the name of development. So uh, that's, that's what uh, we came out of our mission. And that's all this story I would like to tell you now. And the rest will come in the documentary. You know? So I hope I hope you um, you enjoyed it. I know at some point I went very deep, you know, because I mean I, I'm I'm squeezing down, you know, six months of uh, expedition right into one hour. And when I talk, sometimes I forget, you know, if people are interested or not. I just go on, you know, because because that's that's something we we lived and it's it's still very fresh. Inside me, I, I can, I can explain things in details still. So, should we do All some? Right. Uh, I, I hand over to Miss Vera. <laughs> Miss Vera, no, thank you, Anna, for actually this whole story. And you know, I know the story quite well. I thought, but there's always again details that I didn't know, and I really find it beautiful how it's. Like even though the mission was maybe to show the development influence on the rivers and stuff, but you cannot only show that it's so much more. It's live. It's that. It's like everything is intertwined once you start on a mission like this. I would say. Um, yeah, I think it would be cool to use the last fifteen minutes or something. I can understand that people need to go already as well. I saw Sandra needing to run to the store because it closes at nine, which is one of those practical things, right? Um, but everybody that willing to just stay around for like maybe 15 minutes and maybe to share a bit of impressions to other people if people feel this is a parallel to for instance india to peru i think like the experiences you've had um i think people partly recognize it or partly feel very distant from it and i'm quite curious to hear some reactions and or questions somebody wants to... if anybody have any sort of questions you know from from the expedition um, feel free to ask. If Maybe you have I'm going to even give the word to Siddharth because I'm really curious about your reaction also. Um, no, I, first of all, I really enjoyed watching the whole journey and <clears throat> uh, I, I had goosebumps uh, looking at the uh, riverscape and looking at the river and the course. So that was really enjoyable. Uh, but from my personal experience in India, and it's just interesting how this relates so easily, is when I was walking the Ganga, uh, there was a stretch on the river where I went and asked for permission from this uh, forest officer. Uh, it's classified as a sanctuary, but uh, I went and asked the forest officer, uh, you know, is it okay if I walk from here along the river? And I'm informing you so that you know that, you know, there is someone going from this area and it's quite a populated area so it's not that it's like an iso isolated area the forest officer said no you cannot and uh, then i later realized like you also said that i'll probably just go next time without telling that officer because it just doesn't make sense that we can't see our own rivers we can't walk our own rivers we can't kayak our own rivers so that point just made me think about that experience that i also had and uh, how this whole bureaucracy and bureaucratic setup uh, does everything that's uh, violative and everything that's uh, uh, destructive to our rivers. But when we're trying to celebrate it, there's this huge impediment that, you know, you can't do this when you're only trying to celebrate the river. So uh, I feel you from uh, India on the experience of uh, how the bureaucracy has uh, responded to your idea of celebrating the rivers in Nepal. So yeah, that's what I wanted to quickly share. Mm -hmm.
So thanks to that. Does anyone else have something to share or comment? Yeah, thank you, Vera. Thank you, Anil. That was super, super cool, super interesting, cool videos, super cool story. And uh, yeah, as you were saying, Vera, really related with all the with all the situation there. Like I'm, I'm in Peru, and it's also considered a, a country with super rich natural resources and developing. Now it's like a, a big threat, and I'm. Uh, I'm also involved in, in tourism and, and river conservation. And I, I also, I, I really like when you mention all this cultural thing and also all the aspect of the, the teamwork in the, in the expedition and all the human relationships because it's never easy to be even with your best friends dealing, dealing hard situation for so long. So I really enjoy that, that in the part of the movies. And, and yeah, cool that it's not, where we cannot be like anti-development and uh, and it's also here like uh, local communities in the river also are lacking like sewage, lacking uh, clean water to drink, lacking education. So, but uh, can enjoy so many rich farms and they can grow their own produce and they can enjoy all these natural places and uh, and uh, yeah, super cool to see that there's there's. Even the geography and the geology, geology it looks like the Andes, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, enjoy some rivers, rivers there. Uh, and uh, I love Peruvian rivers, so it looks like I'm gonna love Nepali rivers too. And it's really cool to see such a similar situation in the other side of the country, right? Like our rivers and our local riverside communities are dealing with the same. And we're also like trying to, hey, you're actually like everyone from the cities want to travel. And they want to come see what how you're living and experiencing, and they've never seen a lemon or a mango tree. And one of you know their highlights is just to see how people can live out of fresh fruits and stuff like that, you know. And people, local people, don't really know it, so it's really cool to tell them like, hey, actually, what you have is so valuable. And uh, people in the city don't want to be just want to be like you, don't want to be like themselves, kind of. Right? Like people is running away from cities, and so. Uh, yeah, super cool. Uh, and just to mention, Anup, I've heard about you since we, I think we have a really good friend in common, Stefan Pion from France. Oh, yeah. And uh, I shared some, some, he took me run some good rivers in, uh, in uh, France and we share some good rivers mm -hmm. here in Peru also. And uh, I've heard about you for a long time. So really nice to meet you. And I, I, will, you. I will soon come to Peru. Sorry. Yeah, please uh, contact me. We'll go run some rivers. Oh, yes. Yes. And I will uh, like to see that mango plant also. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Coconuts and so many fruits. People love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Mm. I'm quite curious, related this as well, because Luigi is just finishing his thesis today, I guess, about um, tourism being a reason to protect rivers, right? Or, or a way to even protect rivers. And I think Nepal, all cool. countries in the world, is the rafting or has been the rafting destination, right? Mm -hmm. But clearly it's done not enough because at this moment still all those, do you feel that the rafting has at all helped or has maybe postponed development or has had any influence? Rafting? Uh-huh. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, nobody cares about rafting, kayaking, how much it, gener it, it generates, right? I think, again, it comes back to understanding, right? I think the first thing is like, people have to fucking stop thinking about money, right? If, if they are so deep into money, they don't care about the nature, right? They, though they know, they will just ignore it, right? To, uh, to give you an example, I went, so my own bank in Nepal, they, they started a campaign last year or a year, yeah, almost yeah, a year before even. So they started a campaign. It has a picture of a white person kayaking in Nibli's river. And it says, you see rivers, we see opportunities, right? That was, that was a campaign, whole Nepal. When I saw that, imagine it's my bank, right? So I went to the bank and I told them, 
I'm here to close the account. And I guess nobody went to close the account before that, right? They're like, why? I didn't like your policy. And they wanted to close the account. Uh, I wanted to close the account, went there, and the, the girl who I made the account with, she recognized me. She's like, oh, I opened your account. What, what is the reason? I said, I don't like your service. I don't like your policy. I don't like what you, you guys are doing. And I pointed out the campaign was right there. Like, I don't like this. You guys are punching in my face. I'm an adventurer. I'm a river lover, right? And you guys are like simply punching on my face. Like, we all know every single banks are investing in the river. Then she took the case higher up. Then she's like, went to another manager. And I told him also, like, I'm out. Then Nepal has these weird rules, right? Like, if I have more than 50,000 rupees in my account, I need to do a check, this and that. And um, so this person looked at my account and he's like, oh, you have actually a good transaction right? because I'm, I'm good at spending money. I don't keep money in the bank, right? So I'm always taking in and out, in and out. So he's like, you're actually a very valuable customer. You know, we would, we would like to talk to you. So they requested to talk, like instead of closing. So they brought the case all the way to the top Right? I didn't meet the CEO, but I met someone quite important. So they were like, please come back tomorrow. We will set up a meeting and we'll talk because uh, we want to hear, because what you are telling, we, we want to hear more. So actually I went all the way there and then I told them like, look, I just simply told them, I know every single, I, when I leave your bank, I'm going to go to another bank. I know this bank are doing the same thing. You know, every single bank are investing in hydropower. I know that. But like no other bank are throwing this on our face, saying you know what you guys are saying. You know, so this is this is just not right, right? So so the the campaign is closed. We still see the posters, you know, here and there. They have already brought the new campaign, and actually the main the main person I ended up talking to, uh, I personally could tell her, you know, I, I told her like we we all are after money, we all are after development. Right? But then if we don't understand the value of the river, you know, how important it is for, for human beings, for the planets, for, for the trees, for the birds, you know, everything. Right? If you don't see the value of it, then you guys will never save it. Right? So, and I, I actually urge them because they want to help us now. Right? So they're like, well, you know, let us know what kind of project you are doing. Maybe we can, and, and that's what I suggested. I told them like, you know, people are all into adventure now. Everybody wants to do adventure. Yes, you have your business. You have your secret business, you know, where you put your money, this and that. That's one thing. Why don't you come also into nature? Why don't you do something in nature? Help a little bit in nature. Educate the kids. This and that. Because after all, you need, you need people to come in your bank. Right? <clears throat> So, so what I mean is like, you know, I think we, we have to teach people the, the value of river, right? If, if they understand the value of river, then uh, I, think, I think they will, they will at least not destroy it. Maybe they will not save it, but at least they will not destroy it. So. <clears throat> yeah, some really interesting comments and tricky campaign they put up. Huh? That's crazy but mm -hmm. that shows how disconnected we are or somehow development has potentially made us from nature and then going to those villages you see more connection right but also i don't know it's it's interesting and now we try mm -hmm. to get the connection back and i think rafting is actually a cool way to do it so it's surprising that like such mm -hmm. a rich rafting culture doesn't really do that too much still because um, I think it's also seen often as this thing of only the foreigners, right? Just exactly what you say, like, even the raft guides, they don't care about doing the adventure. They do the rivers that are there, the commercial rivers and nothing more. They don't go out. That part is not in the culture too much or something. That, that, that's why we are also losing our rivers uh, quicker because, because the river guides, right, who make living out of the river, they don't understand the value of the river. For them, it's, it's the way to make money. So if this goes out, they will find another way to make money. Yeah. Do you and see so, that also? So this is why... A lot. Huh? In Peru, it's the same, right? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time, first time I we were just talking a few days ago. Uh, first time we were organizing the campaign to protect the Marañón and we were organizing this 18 day expedition. We were trying to get guides to be volunteers to guide the, all the crew that we were going to do a documentary and stuff. And we couldn't find anyone. Anyone will go to the river if you don't pay them. And I was super surprised because river community is so cool. But if you ask them during the high season to go to a river to help protect them without pay, like we couldn't find anyone to do it. So, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, river guides, guides see it as a job also. And they're like, oh, let's go to the river before it's dumped. And then we'll go to the next one that is not dumped. So, uh, yeah, I found a lot of people protecting rivers that are not kayakers or river guides and are just more concerned about other things. But I, I agree with, with Anu, like I, we also, I, and I also believe, and part of the conclusions the study I've been doing, that tourism can be a tool to, to help raise awareness about these values of the river as a, as a way to educate people and to raise awareness about all these values, way more important values of rivers for biodiversity, social cultures and people. Uh, and of course, like having fun rapids for, for people that can have the extra time to go have fun, put themselves in danger for the fun and the excitement. You know, like that's, that's in the last of the queue for sure of priorities. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. This, this is like the last closing question because I guess we're already two hours in this uh, call <laughs> now and uh, it's very late in Nepal at least. Um, but you being like one of the few in each river people there that really became towards activism and you just like Luigi mentioned it's difficult to get those people out to do a voluntarily cool mission actually even like um, Roja and all of them were kind of hesitant about that. You did get them out because they have been in Europe and they had the money to kind of spend the winter I think on the rivers in a bit um, at least. But okay, you called yourself a wannabe activist to me and I'm curious because I think for instance what you just mentioned, sorry for the background noise, um, going into this bank and saying like okay this is something I don't agree on, that's a form of activism I would say as well, right? So, so where do you see your role of an activist and when do you kind of make sure not to be too activistic to get more people along? Do you see what I mean? Like why run a be activist, why not activist? Uh, no, uh, I'm not calling myself an activist because I'm not doing uh, what one activist should do, right? Like going out there dedicated to saving this project, you know, or, or you know, making that project yours and uh, putting time, energy, all. Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, so that's why academically, I'm not calling myself an activist. But on the other hand, I can, I can also call myself activist, right? Uh, and that way I have chosen is, is social media with right? YouTube. I wasn't into, I have, you know, uh, I used to vlog in 2005. I had my, I had my first vlog from 2005, right? So I have been in, into filming camera since a long time. And now vlog is the trend, right? And I'm like, what is this? You know, I used to do that, right? But we never called it vlog. So, so I was not into this either. I, I, I started filming this and that, but then Today, I just found, you know, this platform very strong to relay the message, right? I mean, look at here, you know, more people should be here, right, to discuss about this. But, but very few like-minded people are here because it's a meeting, right? Because, because one is going to talk, another is going to talk. It's kind of boring, you know, for, for many, right? But if I create... A, a video, you know, that is entertaining. And I am not speaking, I'm not telling you, you know, this is bad, this is good, this is, I'm not telling you that. You know, I'm only expressing my feelings. You know, I'm going to a place that I went, you know, 15 years ago, and I, I saw my old footage or my pictures. And I'm like, this is how it used to be. You know, I was breathing, I was playing here. And look at here what it is now. You know, there is a road. You know, there is nothing. There is like big electric poles, this and that. 
So I have chosen, I have chosen that way to, to relay this message. So, uh, so my platform is growing. You know, I, I don't ask anybody to subscribe, anybody to share, because, because I don't want to force people to, to come in. I want people to find out, you know, because like-minded people, when you like it, I know when you like it, you will definitely share it, right? To the right platform. So, so I can call myself activist in that way, but, but I'm not using those words, the, those formulas or being, well, I might be, sometimes I'm aggressive, right? I'm not saying I'm not aggressive. Like sometimes I, I really emotionally tell people like, this is bad, you know, what are you doing? You know, I even use profanity, you know, sometimes. So, so this is where I stand, I would say like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not academically going because I don't have that knowledge, right? And it is, uh, it is a commitment, right? So, so that's why. Because if I go that way, first I need a knowledge, right? I need to before I speak, I need a knowledge. So this way, I'm only expressing my feelings. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just expressing my feelings. So, so, um, so you guys are on this side. I'm on this side. So I think I think you know. So that way I'm activist, otherwise uh, not really. So, so for instance, the documentary that will come out, right, Mission is to West, it's our goal is to be positive. We're not gonna tell throughout the documentary, we're not gonna tell hydropower is bad, right? Because, because we are all guilty for it. You know, we cannot say that, right? We cannot say don't damn. But rather, we can we can say what it does, you know, in long term. What kind of effect it does? So if people understand that, maybe that will convince people more, you know, to not do it rather than, you know, telling them bad this that. So so documentary has also same kind of message. We try to keep it very neutral and uh, not blame anybody. Cool. So yeah. Yeah, thanks for that reflection. And I think this also shows that just kind of the different roles people can play and should play and wherever you can do your bit that you feel is important for the world, right? That's what you do. And um, not having to be too modest yourself, right? Like he's actually got, I just looked it up, 14,700 people following your YouTube channel. That for never having asked anyone to follow it. It's pretty cool, and it shows that you've got a huge audience, right? Yeah, actually, just just to um, give one quick example, you know, one of the brother, he has been here since the beginning. Will's traveler, he also has uh, big followers in uh, YouTube. He's from Nepal. I don't know him uh, personally now. So yesterday, well, today, he just asked if he can go rafting with us, right? Because last week, well, this weekend, we went rafting. And it was, I took 40 people. We did not charge them money. We charged them what it cost, right? I know if my industry people finds out, they will not be happy with me. But, but I also have answered to them, you know, like I, I'm bringing my friends to the river and it's not my business, so I'm not making money. I'm not killing your business because my friend would not go with you, you know, they're coming with me. And, and I am, well, we try to give them uh, the authentic, what I call, you know, the authentic experience of river world, right? Everybody goes rafting. What is the point of like going rafting, you know, get drunk in the evening, play music, you know, loud music, dance, you know, barbecue, this, that, like you can do that everywhere in the world, but like authentic rafting, it's, it's almost disappeared, right? Like, so, so what, what our goal is, you know, like, we want to show happiness. I mean, one of the reasons you know, this brother asked to come is because he saw that there is, he saw happiness through that images, right? Like, you know, like, oh, it, it seems fun. And now, you know, I'm also biking. So we are adding, you know, biking, rafting, and we are also adding flying, right? So if we can bring people, if we can show people that it's fun, and if people feel it and they want to come, I, I know we will save this world. You know, it will might take time, but we will. 
So, so my another message, you know, lately I start to tell people now, like, if you love the nature, let's be a little bit more aggressive because, because the ones that are destroying, they're going very fast. You know, they're, they're going quite fast. So we also be, we also have to be a little bit extra aggressive. So I'm talking more, more our way, right? Like, okay, whoever wants to go, let's take them. You know, if they have money, we take their, take their money. If they don't have money, but they really want, let's take them. Let's let's give them the experience. So at least if we take, you know, 100, maybe 10 will feel something, right? And maybe out of that 10, maybe there is 1% who has power to, you know, say something, say, you know, or change things. So that that's the way uh, I'm thinking right now in terms of saving this nature. Sweet, I guess we are uh, coming to the end. I think so too. I think it's been a good evening. It's already very much night for you. For me, the afternoon just starts. I'm gonna have some lunch. Um, thanks, Anna, for all your story, yeah, for sharing all your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Really cool how you took us along on this journey and as well into like what role you play and how. And um, so I definitely learned something. Um, I think we're gonna. Oh, now people are turning on their cameras to say thank you. I think everyone's really raving. Um, Nadia, yeah. I'm waiting for you to come to Nepal also. Absolutely. Uh, uh, until when are you there? Until the rivers are alive. Until the rivers are alive. Yeah, they are really dying, want... so come soon. Come soon. Uh, no, this time, uh, until end of end of the month. Then I'm. I'm go back, back to Iceland, soon. I guess. Oh, that's very fast that the rivers are dying. In the month? Huh? <laughs> in the month? <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Cool. You but I'm back, back here. Uh, I'm back here in October. Cool. Yeah. Nice. You know, Nepal is, you know, surprisingly, Nepal is wide open. There is no corona. I mean, corona is somewhere. Nobody talks about it. Nobody cares about it. People wear masks. That's it. You know, until two months back, we were, now it's feasting, right? Like, hi, hi. You know, three months back, it was hi. We <laughs> came to this. And now for last month, last month, it was like, you know, it was like this. Oh, so you want to get... And now, now we have gone back to this. Like we're almost, you know, all our friend circle where we're back to this. Life is, man, like life is, I don't know how it is in that world here. I made a, I almost went to Switzerland to spend the winter. I bought a ticket even because I was like, oh, Nepal, you know, like the corona can spread very bad, this and that. But like, oh man, like since beginning of October, I arrived here mid October. There is no corona. <laughs> I think then it was Life probably the wiser choice to, to go back to Nepal. Here in Switzerland, yeah, yeah. it's pretty much locked down still. I mean, yeah, I think, I think many other other places. Yeah. So, mm. so sometimes you know, it's bad, but but life is going on. You know, we don't hear yeah. Corona. I don't know. Somehow, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's it's you know, we also heard the jumps dies in uh, the bacteria dies in the heat, so maybe it's all dead. Yeah, true. I mean, it, here it was exactly like this in Switzerland. They opened up in summer last last year, and it was good all summer. And once the winter and the cold came back, the, the cases came back, and everything went back to lockdown. Yeah. And now summer is coming it's, again, so I hope it will be again like this. Yeah, let's let's not talk about Corona. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> we have had it now. Yeah. You go directly to to Iceland uh, when you go back, or you you lay over somewhere. I mean, uh, Denmark. Denmark. Okay. Yeah. Little one. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know. I have to look. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. And then you go straight back to working, or when does the season start? Oh no, no, no. I have to. I have to. Uh, um, our season starts from first of May, but um, I have to do a hotel quarantine. Ah, in Iceland, really? How long? Uh, five days. Okay. So you, you always say, yeah, let's not talk about Corona. And then the next, the next exactly. topic, like, you know, I have to do quarantine. <laughs> yeah. But, ah, okay. But it's all good. 
all good. Yeah. It's it's life. We just have to keep on living it. Exactly. Get the best out of it. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, cool. looking forward. Thank you. To seeing you Thank soon. You. And, uh, Thank you. To hear you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Yeah. Looking I forward to uh, see you. Yeah, I hope to see you guys. Hi there. Sooner yeah. than later. Cool. Somewhere yeah. in this world. Come around in Albania, we still hope to be able to get there in July. <laughs> we'll mm. see. And Montenegro I'll before. Yeah. Cool. Okay. You guys Thanks. have a good day. Good night. Good evening. Talk to Thanks you soon. Bye.